To this important message and then the important ministration the Lord is my shepherd virtually almost everybody knows the psalm which psalm is this by the way psalm 23 let me read to you the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Then it says, yea. That means, yes, truly, surely. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now you will see that this time is very peculiar. It stands in a very peculiar place. And in the details in the psalm, as you look from verse 1 all through to the end, a lot of things that we have here. I think we need uh, almost, uh, I think we need the whole conference to be able to touch on the depths of Psalm 23. Let's see what we can do in this moment that we have. It says, the Lord is, isn't that in the present tense? And then it says, he maketh me, isn't that in the present tense? He leadeth me, he restoreth my soul, he leadeth me. And then it says, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will not fear evil. Thou preparest a table before me that's still in the present. And then it's seen, thou notest my head. And then it says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me because of all these present realities and present blessings this is what will happen not only that look at this we're starting from verse one again it says the lord is my shepherd isn't that personal it's in the present tense number one number two it is personal it said this is not just the shepherd of israel and it is not just the shepherd of a nation. And it's not just the shepherd of the whole church of the believers. Yes, I know it is. But it's mine. This is personal. Even though other people may not trust, I trust. Other people may not come, may not come under the abiding shadow and protection of this shepherd. This is mine, is my shepherd. Therefore, I, it's personal, I shall not want. He maketh me. It's me. It's not what relates to other people, what happens to other people, what doesn't happen to other people. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores whose soul my soul he leadeth who me in the paths of righteousness and then he says though i walk he says i'm not going to get into the trap of comparing myself to other people why all the people having it easy and i'm having it tough and difficult why is it other people appear to be having everything going on for them and see the pressure the pain the difficulties the persecution i have it says that's not my problem even though i walk and he says i'm not even running 
through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, when you, it's like you look at a child and the child is going and moving and it gets to a place that is dark. The boy or the child runs. He wants to get through that thing very quickly. He says, I'm not going to be a child like that because I know God is every, if I go to the depths of the earth, God is there. If I go to the top of the hill, God is there. If I go to the depths of the sea, God is there. If I climb up to the high heavens, God is there. Why do I run? He that believeth shall not make haste. And therefore he says, though I walk through, I'm walking through. I said, I'm walking through. He said, you know, my destiny is not in the valley. My destiny is to live in the house of the Lord forever. And it says, therefore, the moment I have now in this valley, I'm just passing through. This is not the goal for me. And this is not the final destination for me. Therefore, it says, though I walk through. And it is a do we walk through. You know, sometimes when you're in the fire of furnace, you need a companion. You say, where is my friend? Where is my prayer partner? Where is uh, my well-wisher? Where is uh, somebody supporting me? It says, once I have Christ Emmanuel, God with me. His staff and his rod, they comfort me. What else do I need? I'm walking through. Everybody say, I'm walking through. And it says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of, wait a minute. It says, it, I'm not walking through the valley of death. My shepherd has conquered that for me. And it says, I'm just walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And now it's saying, anytime you see a shadow, it means the sun is shining somewhere. Where there is no sun, there is no shadow. Am I right? It says the sun of righteousness is shining. And because it's still shining, that's why this is just a shadow. By the way, do you know, the shadow of a lion cannot bite me. The lion may bite, but the shadow cannot bite. And death may kill, but the shadow of death cannot kill. And a sword may kill, may destroy, but the shadow of a sword is nothing. And he says, this one is not death. You don't need to fear this. And he says, though I walk through the shadow, the valley of the shadow of death. Then he said, I will not. He says, this is a personal decision. I will not. If I have any will at all, any decision at all, if I have anything in my mind at all to make me say, this is what I will do. I've been talking about what he will do, my shepherd. He does this, he leadeth me, he prepares the table, he does this. But now for me, since my shepherd is there, this is just my personal decision. That no matter what I see, no matter what I feel, no matter what I'm going through, I will fear no evil. Why, David, because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. Oh, do you know that the rod terrifies the evildoers? The rod terrifies the wolves. But it says, what terrifies them comforts me. What makes them afraid comforts me. He is shepherd to me. He is a judge to them. He is father to me, he is judge unto them. Therefore, his actions, his rod, will terrify them because he stands in the place of a judge. But for me, his rod and his staff, they do what? They comfort me. And now he says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of all my enemies. You prepare a table before me, and I say, my shepherd, aren't you worried, aren't you anxious, aren't you concerned that my enemies will disrupt your plan for my life? And then I'll not be able to reach the goal. And don't you think that if I see the enemies there, I may not even have appetite to eat what you are preparing? He says, but why? When those enemies are all destroyed and they are nothing, there's another word, they are non entities. Non entities, something not to reckon with. 
and because they are worthless and they are nothing and they are non-entities therefore forget about them i said forget about them and then he prepareth it before me in the presence of mine enemies and then he says thou anointest my head i thought the enemies will dry up the anointing never never you know that's what the people think that's what the enemies think those enemies will think you know will so torment that fellow and will so disturb him that the anointing will dry up never thou anointest my head even though the enemies are there and he says my cup runneth over and he says now surely he said who will not have assurance and certainty when you see all this when you see what the shepherd is doing and when you see what the shepherd has promised to do surely goodness and mercy shall do what follow me for it means you are moving you know if you just stand here like this like a log of wood and you are not moving nothing follows you it is when you are moving like this and you are moving and you are moving then something is following after i hear some people say i don't know what is happening i always have a feeling that demons are following me not me <laughs> i said not me you know these people that come for prayer every time pastor you saw me last year you prayed for me but you know that you let every time everywhere i'm going there's something following. i said what's following you if you are a sheep in the fold goodness and mercy shall follow me how long all the days of my life and then it says it says this is my destiny this is where i'm going i'm not stopping in the valley i'm not going to stop my journey halfway i'm not stopping in the enemy's camp and i'm not stopping in the persecutor's dungeon surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord how long forever now do we live forever here on earth the man is not thinking about heaven he said i'm going to have all the good things here on earth and think about it when i finish all my assignment here i'm going to go up yonder and then it says i will dwell in the house of the lord forever i'm looking at psalm 23 with you but you see if you're going to look at psalm 23 and you're going to get the benefit of psalm 23 you have to go back to psalm 22 and then come to 23 and then you don't even stop there you must go to psalm 24 so i'm looking at psalm 22 i'm looking at psalm 23 i'm looking at psalm 24 one two three i wonder why it's always three maybe one day it will be four praise the lord now I'm looking at Psalm 22 because you have to look back and then see the value of the contribution of the past to the present and then see the link, the association of the present to the future. In Psalm 22, we have the Lord who is Savior. In Psalm 23, we have the Lord who is Shepherd. In Psalm 24, we have the Lord who is king. I use the word sovereign, sovereign. S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-A. -E to reign. The king who reigns. The king of kings and the lord of lords. The sovereign. In Psalm 22, we we'll see the savior of the sinner. Psalm 22, point number one, the savior of the sinner. Number two, the shepherd of the sheep. The shepherd of the sheep. Have you ever noticed goats don't appear to have shepherds? Have you ever noticed the wolves don't appear to have shepherds? Who wants to be a shepherd to the wolves? I don't. I don't want to be. How about you? And you know that the snakes don't have a shepherd, just the sheep. The snakes, you know, some people say, I don't know why. I have all this snake spirit crawling all over me. Ha! Ah. And you read Psalm 23 every time. Is the shepherd of the sheep, not the shepherd of the goats, of the wolves, of the snakes. Those ones don't have any shepherd. Only the sheep have shepherd. Then number three, the sovereign of the saints. The king of the saints. The sovereign, the king of 
the saints. I come to number one. As you look at Psalm 22, what do you see? You're going to see that this is Christ dying for us on the cross. In fact, Jesus Christ himself said, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gave his life for the sheep. The good shepherd. Here is the Savior. Look at Psalm 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Have you heard that before? When was that spoken in the New Testament? When Christ was on the cross, paying for our redemption and paying for our salvation, you must understand that he must be your savior before he becomes your shepherd. We don't just jump into Psalm 23 and say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. How many people read that? Maybe Sunday after Sunday, as we still see the wants, the lack, the need, the limitation, the loss in their lives. Because they didn't go to Psalm 22. To discover that this Christ and this Lord, first of all, he is my Savior. And it is when you taste him, when you know him as Savior, then you'll come to Psalm 23 and there'll be no doubt about it. You will know that this Lord who is first my Savior then becomes my shepherd. He says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I want you to look at verse, uh, verse 8. It says, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. That's exactly what those people said to Jesus when he was on the cross of Calvary. They said, if you are the Savior and the Son of God, why don't you come down from the cross and then we're going to believe you. Psalm 22 is talking about the Savior. And the Lord is saying, go through Psalm 22. Identify with my pain. Identify with the very fact that I bore the punishment. Identify with the very fact that I bore all your sorrow, all your sin, all your shame. I paid the price of your redemption, the price of your salvation. It is when you realize that he is Savior, that then you can move on to Psalm 23 and say, Now I know. Because he is my Savior, he is also my shepherd. We're looking at verse 16. In verse 16 it says, For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Listen to this. They pierced my hands and my feet. Who wrote Psalm 22? Look at the title on the top. David, I'm asking you a question now. In the history of the life of David recorded for us, was there any time they pierced his hands and they pierced his feet? No. He was talking about the Savior. He was looking ahead. In fact, the New Testament says, being a prophet himself, he saw this ahead of time. And he spoke about Christ. And he said, they pierced my hands and they pierced my feet. In fact, apart from David, can we point to anybody in the Old Testament? I know they persecuted Isaiah, Ezekiel, and they persecuted Daniel. They persecuted all.